Okay, so if you're interested in the subject of economics or you have studied the subject of economics, you might have come across these terms. So what we'll today be talking about is demand and supply. And we'll be taking a basic introduction to the market forces that govern the way in which a market works. So if you have any if you have a friend who studies economics, you might have come across these two terms. And today we'll essentially be studying what these terms essentially mean. So uh, in this chapter or in this video, we'll be talking primarily about three terms. So the first term is demand. The second term is supply. And the third term is market. So now first, let's, let's understand what these terms individually mean. When we talk about demand, we essentially say that a buyer wants to buy a commodity to maximize his or her utility. Now, of course, the, the buyer will buy that commodity in exchange for money. So the buyer essentially loses some amount of money to get that commodity and that commodity obviously needs to have some utility that satisfies the buyer's uh, needs or requirements or desires. The next term is supply. So by this term, we essentially mean that a seller wants to sell his or her product in exchange for money. So uh, the individual will uh, sell that product and get some amount of money in exchange. And uh, the seller will always try to, uh, try to maximize his or her own profits. And that is the objective of a seller. The third term is the market, which is essentially a group of buyers and sellers of a particular good or service. So when we talk about a market, we essentially refer to a particular good or service. So uh, both the buyer and the seller come together into the market to fulfill their shared interests. Uh, so for example, the buyer wants to buy the commodity from the seller in order to maximize his utility and the seller wants to sell his or her product to the buyer in order to maximize their own profits. So let's first analyze the topic of demand. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to distinguish between demand and quantity demanded because these two terms are essentially referring to two different concepts. So when we talk about demand, that is essentially a phenomenon. It refers to the pattern exhibited by a consumer. So when I'm talking about by demand, I essentially mean a set of points which essentially refer to the quantity demanded by me at a particular price. So it refers to a set or a collection that considers my uh, pattern. And uh, when I talk about quantity demanded, that essentially relates to the, to the commodity itself. So demand is kind of like a universal phenomenon and quantity demanded refers to a particular situation. So for example, at a particular price, I demand this amount of quantity. At that point, I am talking about the quantity demanded. But when I'm talking about demand in general, it refers to all the price points that are available in the market and all the respective quantities that I demand at those relevant price points. So the next thing that I'll be talking about is uh, essentially the way in which this entire concept of demand works. So the first thing that I'll be defining is the quantity demanded of any good. So that's what I discussed in my pre uh, previous slide. So the quantity demanded of any good is the amount of good that the buyer is willing and able to purchase given the relevant market price. So let's say I want to buy uh, a Lamborghini, but I do not have the purchasing power or I do not have the money to buy that. Then that demand essentially does not qualify as my quantity demanded in the language of economics. For me to demand any amount of quantity of any good, I need to be willing to purchase it. So I won't buy something that I do not want and I need to have the purchasing power. So that's essentially what I mean when I'm talking about willing and able to purchase given the relative market price. There might be some goods that I want to buy, but the market price is too high for me to buy it. If the market price comes down, I might buy it then. So it, given the relative market price. Now this entire quantity demanded, as I talked about, demand is essentially a set of all the relevant price points in the, pr available in the market and the ways in which I demand the quantity. So the demand schedule is what I was essentially talking about when I was talking about demand. The demand schedule is a table that shows the quantity demanded at each price. So given every market price available at the market, I'll be uh, 
showing a particular quantity demanded that will essentially represent my entire preference pattern on my demand pat pattern and that is exhibited by the demand schedule so you will be seeing that in a future slide where i'll be making a table where i list the prices that are available in the market and the de quantity demanded of that good by any um, particular individual in the market so uh, as you can see this uh, in this slide, I have two diagrams. So the first diagram that I have is the demand schedule that I was talking about. Notice that this is a table which has two columns and uh, one of them is the market price available and the other is the quantity demanded. So let's say there's a particular good that you want to buy, but you don't necessarily want it as such, you just like it. So if let's say if the price is $10, you might not want to buy that good and uh, that quantity demanded will essentially be zero because you're not buying the quantity so you're not demanding the quantity as such so at ten dollars you'll be demanding zero units of that of that commodity let's say even at nine dollars you still feel that the price of that good is too high so you do not end up buying any amount of that good so the quantity demanded of that good still remains at zero Let's say the price further drops to six. So there's probably some market forces at work, which we'll be talking about in our later part of the video. Uh, the price keeps dropping. And right now it's at $6 for uh, good, for, for unit or per piece of the good. So then you think, well, it's suitably low price and I can buy one good. So let's say it's, it's probably, a, um, I don't know. You can take any of your favorite toys, you can take any of your favorite dolls or, I don't know, magazines, whatever suits you. So let's say at $6, you find that it is a reasonable price for that good and you say, okay, fine, I'll buy one of that good. When the price falls further, you're like, okay, well, uh, I had monthly allowance of a particular amount and considering the fact that the price has dropped to $4, I can actually afford to buy more of it. I do not need to save for my future considering the fact that the price has dropped from $6 to $4 per piece. So what I do is I end up buying one more good. And what happens is, as you can see, as the price falls, the quantity demanded of my good keeps on increasing. So when it was $10, when it was $9, I was essentially not demanding any amount of that good. When it dropped to $6, I started, well, I started with buying one good, one piece of the good or one unit of the good. Then it fell to $4 and I buy two of the commodity. When it fell to $3, I buy three of the commodity and then it fell to $2. So from $10, it kept falling and falling and falling through $9, $6, $4, $3, and until it reached a price point of $2. And as you can see, if I look at this column, the quantity demanded started from zero. So I was not buying anything at all. Then I buy one when the price dropped. Again, when the price dropped, I said, okay, fine, the price is dropping. So let's buy more. So as the price keep kept dropping, I started increasing the quantity demanded of that good. And at the lowest price point, which is $2, I buy the most amount of good, which is four units. So this is what essentially represents my uh, demand schedule. So you see for particular price points, which are available in the market, I am uh, tabulating the quantity demanded of that good. And uh, this table essentially is what we call the demand schedule. The next diagram is the demand curve. So essentially the demand curve is a diagrammatic representation of demand schedule because you know uh, diagrams are essentially a much more uh, lucid and a much more representable way of showing the demand schedule. There's probably some bug in this file. Well, uh, so there's, that is a much more representative way of showing the demand schedule. So. Uh, what I do is I plot price on the vertical axis and I plot quantity demanded or supplied on the horizontal axis. So for every relevant price point, I plot the quantity demanded on the horizontal axis pertaining to every Y coordinate or ordinate and uh, abscissa on this side. So let's start. At $10, I was demanding zero units of commodity. So when I move to $10, I'm essentially uh, demanding 10 units so that this point essentially pertains to this row. So let's see if I have a highlighter. Yeah. So at this level, so at this level, I am at this point. 
again, when I'm talking about this price point, I'm still demanding zero units of commodity. So even at nine units of pri nine price point, that is when the market price is nine dollars, I'm still demanding zero units of the commodity. So that's still on the vertical axis. When the price finally drops to $6, I'm demanding one unit of the commodity. So when the price is $6, I'm demanding one unit of the commodity. So what I do is I join these two points. So what I essentially do is at first, I just plot these points. And finally, I join these points using straight lines. So as you can see, uh, pertaining to this row, I have at six units or, or at $6 of price point, I am demanding one unit of the commodity. Similarly, at $5 price point, I'm demanding two units of the commodity. So four units on the vertical axis and two units on the horizontal axis gives me the point that pertains to this row. Going down, I have $3 where I buy three units of the commodity. So I move in the similar fashion. I take three here. So that's the point between four and two. So that's three. And I uh, consume three units of the commodity here. So this point. Uh, relates to this uh, row that we have here. And finally, the lowest price point that I have pertaining to this market and this good, obviously this market refers to a particular good that I'm talking about in this situation. I have $2 uh, of price point where I'm demanding the maximum amount of quantity that is four units of that commodity. So that is how I essentially plot my demand curve. And uh, yes, that is my demand curve. Now, why do you have the demand curve sloping downwards? That is a very important question pertaining to the concept of demand. So the answer of that question would be the law of demand. The law of demand essentially claims that other things being equal, the quantity demanded of a good falls when the price of a good rises. So that's a very natural thing to happen. As I mentioned before, if the price of a good falls, it essentially means you have more money at hand. And this money, what we essentially call in economics is real income. So that essentially refers to the purchasing power that you have at your hand. And when the price of a good falls, essentially your real income increases. So it's like you have more money at hand and you will obviously buy more of that good because the good that you're buying gives you utility. It gives you satisfaction. It fulfills your desires and fulfills your needs. So of course you will be willing to buy that good more of that good when the price of that good falls that is a very natural and a very obvious thing to see so that is what we essentially mean when we talk about the law of demand now how does this law help us explain that the demand curve slopes downwards so let's go back and check what essentially happens so we again have this diagram in front of us and as you can see as i've mentioned before as the price of the good keeps on falling, the quantity demanded of the good keeps on rising. So this pertains or this satisfies the law of demand that we have discussed before. But as you can see, the price is marked on this direction and the quantity demand is, is, is marked on this direction. So as per to the schedule that I have here, as the price of the good falls, the quantity demanded will rise. So essentially, there's a negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. So when the price of the good increases, the quantity demanded of the good will fall. That essentially means that there's a negative relationship. So there's a negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. And we know that when there's a negative relationship between uh, the two coordinates or the two values that I have, so the x x or the x value and the y value it essentially has a negative slope in the two dimensional uh, sphere or in the two dimensional area and we essentially have a curve that has a negative slope so that is how we uh, explain the fact that the demand curve is always downward sloping it is obviously very relevant and it's very easy to explain that as the price of the good keeps on falling the x coordinate or the x value of the points keep on increasing so the curve moves in this direction